Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today, I'm going to continue on with my beginner's tying series. Uh, get, get, start getting into hackles today. Um, we're going to break this up into probably two, maybe even three segments, because this can be a really big subject, and I don't want these being hour-long videos. So, um, I'm just going to show you guys a couple of uh, different types of hackles real quick. And then what I'm going to concentrate on today is dry fly hackle um, and uh, just the different styles and types and, and stuff. So, uh, And then we'll do a wet fly another time. But I'll show you guys the difference between the two right now. So I have a bunch of stuff here. So let's start with wet fly just so you guys can see what I'm... What, uh, because I'm gonna, not going to really do wet fly today, but I'm just going to show you what wet fly hackle looks like. So anytime you got these big capes and stuff, most of the stuff on here would be considered wet fly hackle. So any of these feathers, right, would be wet fly. Um, same on any of these, right? It's all wet fly hackle, wet fly hackle, okay? Um, that's just the big full capes. Now I'll just show you some of these because this is probably what you guys would see more. So styles like this, right? Um, or this, or this. Oops, right? That's all wet fly, wet fly, um, wet fly, wet fly, right? And the reason is for wet fly, why they call it wet fly. I'm just gonna take one out here. If it is, it's, it's, it's just the way that the hackle lays and stuff is how you can determine whether it's a wet fly or dry fly. So I'm just gonna show you real quick for those that don't know. So here is a dry fly hackle and here is a wet fly hackle. Okay, and if you see, if I do this backwards, you see how all the fibers kind of stick out? I'll show you closer on the other camera, but they stick out. Here, if I do the same thing, they do, they'll stick out as well, but they kind of stick together. You see how they kind of don't really stick straight out? They kind of stick to each other. They get oils in them. And that's the big difference is, is that they... There's more difference, but just for the beginner, that's the that's that's the easiest way of describing what the difference is. So, wet fly hackle comes in in so many different colors and sizes and shapes and and styles and and uh, like I said you can get them uh, Chinese uh, hen neck and golden hen and, and all this these different is uh, considered wet style wet fly style. So, okay. So now that that's out of the way dry fly so dry fly hackle dry fly hackle right it's all kinds of all different kinds of dry fly hackle different colors different sizes different shapes different you know so it just all depends what you're looking for red You've got all kinds these are all like grizzly um, but you can also do like this is is a dry fly as well right India cock cape so um, I'll, I'll show you closer on the other camera so let's let's just do that because it's kind of hard to really see anything here in a close-up so let us switch over to the other camera so I'm just gonna back this out just a little bit so I'm just using some junky junky hook uh, I don't even know what it is to be honest oh there we go number six streamer that's all it says. <laughs> it just came in a auto fuse box that I bought a bunch of these at a, a estate sale. So, but like I was saying, here. So this is a dry fly. You see how it it when I pull this apart, they just stay stay straight out. And here's a wet. And when I do that, same thing. I'll grab it by the tip and I'll do that. But you see how it kind of sticks together? It's got oils in it, right? And that's the big difference. This will be. This is great for like collars and 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 you can do a, a, um, um, a palmer it forward and stuff too. But really good for like collars and stuff. 
this stuff really is the, the dry fly stuff is really good for um, again palmering forward you can use it for uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, around uh, the, the front end of your the front end of your hook and your thorax or your abdomen area uh, it just when this stuff spikes out like this right it just helps hold it, it, these little dry fly hackles hold on that surface tension right and just help things float so um, I'll just show you really quickly the difference here between them when they're tied on uh, I'm just gonna use just any any old thread this just happens to be Zemperfly Nano Silk but whatever any thread Woohoo! just dropped something I don't know what it was oh that's my whip finisher I'll need that So, here, I'll just go on with a, a wet fly for now. But you also got to notice, right, that you see the wet fly, uh, dry fly, sorry. You see how it gets narrower as it, ta it tapers down? So it's going to be up here, the fibers are going to be shorter and they're going to be longer as they go, right? So you got to remember what you're tying, right? If you want a, a bigger collar, like as an example for this one, I would probably like tie this on by the butt up here if I wanted, right? And then, this is, like I said, this isn't going to hold or anything because usually I'd have a wire in the back, but I'd, I'd wrap this a couple of times at the front and then I could palmer it back, woolly bugger style type of thing, right? So I could do that, right? But, then I would want a, a wire or something at the back. So what I'm just going to do is I just go through it with my thread. Again, it's just to hold it on. It doesn't really matter for this pattern. I'm not making a pattern, right? So, but so and then you can, if you're if you're careful, you can just rip it off, and it's gone. So, but that will sit in the water, right? It'll just sit there. It'll it'll, it'll just sit in that surface film, and it won't. That's why it's called dry fly. It it just helps hold it out, right? Um, and then like with a wet fly, the difference between the two, like I said, there's several different ways to use each, but I'm just going to separate it. So I just got a little bit of my point, my tip sticking out. I'm just going to, like I said, again, just quick, as quickly tie it on. Like I'm not making anything here, so it's more just to learn. So now if I take this, I would usually use a hackle plier just because they're shorter. And then you just stroke all the materials back. And just in touching wraps, come forward. Right. Come forward until you've used it all up. Then tie that off. And you see the difference, how it's laying? It doesn't spike out like a dry fly does. Right. Right? doesn't spike out like a dry fly does it, it it sits more like that so it's really good for doing collars and things like that right so um, and then if you want to go with like the, that so this this uh, green that I was using is is a uh, grizzly cape the dyed green grizzly cape um, you can get them in all kinds of different colors this just I mean straight white there's all kinds of stuff but you can also buy like these India cock capes I'll show you what they do so I'll take a again it's a dry fly just because of the way the barbules are and stuff right but this one will it's kind of half and half you see how it it will st sit out but not as excuse me I've got the hiccups um, not as well as the dry will but doesn't lay back as much as the wet either so just show you see if that'll break off no I didn't didn't think it would so now with this one again same type of thing I'm gonna just palmer this forward but you see how it is spiking out but it's not quite as as spiky as a as a as one of the uh, capes that there that uh, the grizzly cape that I was showing you earlier it's not quite as spiky it actually sits back more like a wet fly so again just uh, of course it didn't uh, 
I guess I gotta try to slow down here. I'm just just trying to do a bunch of them right in one video, which I think I'll. Uh, I definitely think I'm gonna do a second video on on hackle because there there's just so much to them and so many different types of hackle. So I'm just gonna throw this back in there, like I whatever doesn't really matter. Like I said, it was it's just for for show just to show you guys how to how it works but you can see that that does stick up more than the wet but it doesn't stick up as well as the uh, as the actual dry fly grizzly hackle right so let's just because uh, that's looking pretty fugly grab another hookster But a lot of times when you're doing, again, for those beginners, when you're doing any kind of, like, the dry fly hackles and stuff for, for uh, like, woolly buggers and that kind of stuff, because you're using dry fly hackle for it, even though it's a, a sinking fly. But you got to make sure that you, you secure it properly. And the best way to secure them is... Uh, I'm just grab any color. It doesn't really matter. Of course, I won't grab one that's not open. <laughs> Of course, that's micro metal. Uh, there we go. So it doesn't really matter. This is, happens to be a medium, so it's fairly large, but that's okay. So what you would do here is you would you tie in your your wire, right? Tie in whatever kind of body you would want. Doesn't really matter what kind, it's up to you. And then you would tie in your, let's just go with a, let's go with a white hackle here for now. Because I got one handy. About there, just gonna, I just splitting off all the fluff off the end. I'm just gonna tie this in. So I'd have, like if this was a woolly bugger as an example, I'd have my tail tied in, I've had my, I've got my wire tied in, I've got my, body done up to here now I tie in my dry hackle I'll do two or three turns right at the front and then I'll open up my wraps back all the way to the back and then I'm going to counter wrap my wire so now I'm going to counter wrap the wire then as you go through you kind of just uh, just give it a bit of a jiggle and it'll it won't trap the uh, hackle fibers as easy, right? So, just tie that wire off, tie that wire off behind it, in front of it. Stroke everything back, helicopter your wire. I normally, on, a, on something like if I was doing a dry fly as an example, I would do it, uh, I would use a, a thinner, wire not so thick I did not catch it oh, yeah I did catch it so right I would use like a uh, like a one mil instead of a two mil or a small instead of a medium just because I don't want to add weight um, for a woolly bugger it wouldn't have mattered right but so you can see there it spikes it up and right it'll hold it up now the rule of thumb again it depends on the pattern but the rule of thumb is that these should not be much longer than the uh, gap of the hook so that's not bad for a woolly bugger right there I wouldn't go any longer than that, but as an example, right? So, but uh, there are just, there's so many different types of hackles out there. Let's see if I can find some more here. Um, these are all just big ones, just uh, give me one sec. It's time to go to my, my little storage area there. So there's, um, you can also get like schloppen, right? Which is more of a wet fly hackle because again, if you take one out, I'm not gonna take it all out, but if I take one out and just show you guys when I stroke it back, you see it kind of sticks together. That's, and it's kind of oily feeling, wet fly, okay? But then you've got strung saddle, right? And strung saddle is basically just a 
Chinese cock cape, basically, right? So it's going to be a dry fly. So there you go. When you stroke that out, you see how it sticks out? Right? So let's just, uh, for the hell of it, it's a nice contrast in color. Let's uh, just show you guys. I'll tie this in. So this is a piece of strung saddle that you can buy at uh, most of the stores. And this is like the cheaper stuff instead of buying a, buying a whole cape, right? Um, you can buy these packages. And they're like, I think like three, four dollars, five bucks, something like that. So again, you just kind of stroke it back to start just to make sure. All right, then just, I'm just gonna do one in front of each other, not on top because then it'll squish down and I don't want that. So in front of each other, in front of each other. But you see how it's sticking out like a dry fly? Hackle. You can tie that off. Big one. Same thing, strip it back. Hold your, th your thread tight, nip that off, and there you go. So that's used, that front portion is just using strung saddle. Right? So it's, it's just a, a less expensive smaller package it's actually i i'm not 100 percent sure on this but i think it's like the the waist almost pieces of a, of a, a saddle right when you go and buy a, a saddle or whatever when they're manufacturing when they're processing this is the kind of the feathers that fall off so there it's not this as good a quality as obviously as a as a full cape like this but that's basically what's in a strung saddle is what's in here Right in the Chinese cock cape, basically it's it's not. There's more to it, right? But uh, I don't want to confuse all the. This is more for the beginner, right? So I don't want to confuse you guys. So, but you can, like I said, get them in so many different uh, colors and sizes, and and uh, I mean you can go from super small. Like look at the size of these little hackle fibers in here, right? Just tiny little things, super tiny for like size. 20 24s um, and they go up to size 16 18s and then I'm going up to size 10s and 12s and then 8s and 6s so it's all in one cape same with any of these right down low here you're gonna have short little little uh, little ones that are they're gonna be uh, small much smaller for much smaller sizes and then as you get up to the top here you're gonna get to the bigger ones and that's with any of them so um, yeah. so same thing right these are all just different dry fly different dry fly hackles that you can get um, but if you take a oh here I'll just do one more so this is another uh, uh, India cock cape I'm just gonna I'll just jam it in there it's Probably should probably not really enough not enough room at that head, but meh, whatever. We're not tying an actual fly, so I'll just jam it, jam the head area. Actually, I can even come back over that pink a bit. And I like always taking my stem and tying it back and going back over top of it, um, especially in wet flies, um, where adding a little tiny bit of extra weight doesn't matter. But. Uh, just locks that thing in there. So here, so same type of thing. Just gonna make sure all these fibers are going the same way. Stroke back, and then just wrap it. And go all the way around once, and then I'm just gonna slowly come forward, just making sure this is all strung back. But see how that kind of lays a little bit better back than than the dry fly stuff, like the, the, the grizzly. Um, but it doesn't lay back and it's not as it's not oily like the uh, wet fly. So there you go. Actually that doesn't even look too bad. <laughs> I'd actually fish that. But yeah, so so that's uh, that's just a, a little bit of an overview, real quick overview on dry fly hackle. Um, Obviously, you can put some dry fly floatant in them. I know some guys, what they'll do with their dries, oops, that got cooked on my finger. What they'll do with some of their dries, depending on the dries, is they'll put a little bit of floatant on them now, 
and they'll put them in their box and let that float and dry on them and then it'll help uh, it'll help with the uh, the flotation a bit more I know guys especially guys in the UK I've noticed do that a lot so uh, but that's uh, that's up to you but so but yeah that that's basically the the, the function of dry fly hackle is for it to sit on that water and just have those little tiny tips touching the water and that those little tiny tips hold it up that's that's the essentially what dry fly hackle is used for so alrighty well I hope you guys enjoyed that I hope you guys uh, the beginners got something out of that um, there is definitely like I said di many different ways of using dry fly hackle um, I use a lot of this the barbules like just individually the barbules each one of these I'll use like two or three or four of them on uh, for tails like I'll take rip this off and just use this for tails on pertagons and stuff right um, and a little may mayfly nymphs and things like that right but uh, yeah so just uh, just understand that if it if when you stroke it back this the easiest way to tell whether it's a dry or a wet is that when you stroke it back if it sticks out like that and doesn't really stick together each of the individual barbules or feathers um, it's a dry fly if it is like this and you stroke it back and you see how it kind of sticks together and lays back like that if that's what it does then it's uh, more than likely a wet fly okay so okay hope you guys enjoyed that one and got something out of it uh, please uh, consider uh, subscribing if you have not if you have thank you very much and we'll see you guys on the next time video Tie lines. <laughs>